Let's look at AS Physics Unit 1, Matter and Radiation. This is the second movie that I'm recording and this is wholly focused on looking at force interactions and Feynman diagrams. The Grand Unified Theory of Gauge Boson says that particles interact either with photons, gravitons, gluons or W and Z bosons. We're mainly going to focus on the W boson for AS physics. Representations in terms of pictures show gluons like so. Electromagnetic is a photon. Graviton is a predicted thing, we, we don't really cover that. And bosons is W or Z with little squiggly lines. You don't need really to know about gravitons, it's just the strong electromagnetic and weak interactions. Now, as it says, the electromagnetic force acts between charged particles and is transmitted by the massless particle, the photon. A strong interaction acts between nucleons, that's protons and neutrons, and is transmitted by something called the gluon. Theories predicted there are eight of them, you don't need to know that part though. The weak interaction acts over a shorter range than the strong interaction, and it acts on both leptons and hadrons and is transmitted by three bosons called the W+, plus, the W-, minus, and the Z. Now you only need to know for AS physics about the W+, plus and the W-. minus. The gravity idea is the gra gauge boson that transmits the gravitational force. It's called the graviton. It's, it's never as yet been discovered, but it's predicted to have zero mass. We can look at a really good comparison from hyperphysics here, which looks at the idea of gravity, which has a very weak strength, but is infinite, the weak interaction, or a decay, like a beta decay in this case, which has, again, a weak strength, not as weak as gravity, but a very big range. The electromagnetic, which is 1 over 137th of the strength of the strong force. It's quite weak in comparison, but that's got an infinite range. The strong force, though, that holds the nucleus together is a really strong force. When you look at compared to the 10 to the minus 39, the range, though, is very tiny. Otherwise, the universe would well collapse in on itself. Now, we'll skip that one. We'll move on now. Feynman diagrams then. Richard Feynman invented a graphical method to represent the interactions of the particles. The only thing that really means anything is the time and the direction of the arrows. At each vertex, so we're talking about here or here, there must be equal charge into and out of the point of the interaction. Angles are not actually significant. In this case, a neutron turns into a proton as a quark has a change of flavour. So proton to neutron emits a W plus that then goes into a neutrino of an electron flavour and a positron. So we've got antiparticle particle pair. In beta minus decay, it's the exact opposite in antiparticle particle pairs with a neutron change into a proton. Now, for reference, you need to know certain diagrams. Now, we said at each vertex there must be an equal charge into and out of the point of interaction. Consider each vertex on its own, and each vertex would either carry charge through a plus one or minus one charge. When a lepton is released, an antilepton is required to balance the lepton number. All diagrams are linked to a proton or neutron interacting with the lepton. So, you should know beta minus decay, beta plus, electron capture, a neutrino-neutron collision, an antineutrino proton collision, and a proton-electron collision. Let's focus on the vertex rules for a minute. The vertex rules, sorry. Each vertex will carry or cancel through a plus or minus one charge by the direction of the W minus. Let's consider each vertex on its own in this example of beta decay. So in this example of beta decay, a neutron changes to a proton. The charge is transferred through to the antineutrino and electron. So if we think about on the left-hand side, we have neutron going through to proton, which must be plus 1, and the W minus is minus 1. So that is 0. On the right hand side here, or here, we've got minus 1 comes into the vertex, and naught, being here, comes out, and minus 1 comes out. 
So when you balance, minus 1 is minus 1. Very simple really, isn't it? You can now do any Feynman diagram you want using the vertex rule. It always applies. If we focus on the W plus and W minus, they are each other's particle and antiparticle. So when we think of a decay, what we actually mean is a neutron turns to a proton plus a W minus. The W minus then is decayed to form then an electron and an antineutrino electron. So it helps to think about charge being conserved. The second reaction, this one, takes place a very short time and distance after the initial change, or 0.01 femtometers. W minus particles have mass and charge. They carry through the change, but like we said, decay very quickly in a very short time. For reference again, these forms of beta decay are identical. So when we look, neutron changes to proton, neutron to proton, W minus, there's no arrow, but there should be, W minus again. There we've got the two particles that come out, but in this way, look, they still come out, the direction isn't important. If we represented it as quarks, an up quark is created when a down quark changes inside a nucleus or inside a neutron. There, neutron to proton or down to up. Very simple. That's the end of our presentation.